Oh, goodness. <laughs> Target this morning, Alonzo Satillo down here in Everglades. Uh, what do you think? It's the season. You know, we're in a warming trend right now in between cold fronts. We've had uh, the water temperatures come up quite a bit and uh, the fish are starting to show up in good numbers. So we're gonna be fishing the backcountry? Yep, we're gonna primarily target the backcountry and uh, make our way out to the coast. You know, kind of go with uh, what the day gives us and mainly what the, the weather is gonna do for us. And so this is a traditional, you know, wintertime or end of the winter kind of pattern. They move back in here or? Right, right. So this time of year, the fish, um, they'll go out to deeper water when it gets cold. And um, once the warming trend starts in between fronts or towards the spring, they'll start to come in out of the Gulf. Okay. And get in their staging zones. You know, some fish come into the back country. A lot of fish stay out on the coast and go into Florida Bay as well and into the Keys. So, well, we're sitting here in the middle of February in Florida. It's Middle 70s, expected to be in the 80s today. Water temperature is 78.6, so it's definitely definitely warm enough for them to get in here. So right, hopefully yeah. we catch them. The odds are in our favor for sure. <laughs> sought after game fish found in multiple different oceans known for its ability to fight you know, difficult to find but so rewarding when you do I think every angler has a, a spot in their heart for tarpon you know once you catch one it's addicting whether it's a, a five pounder or a 200 pounder it, it has this quality about it that keeps you coming back you know and it has such a history in the sport fishing community you know there was presidents that have have traveled to, you know to florida to target these and people travel all over the world just to accomplish this one feat of catching and releasing these silver kings they're called the silver kings because of their coloring obviously you know flashy bright um silver silver colored giant scales and you know, known for their acrobatics, known the first time you hook them that they're gonna jump and they're, they're so acrobatic and put on such a display. And, you know, pretty much the king of the inshore waters are the nearshore waters. We're kind of looking for rollers, uh, some free jumpers. And uh, a lot of the times I'm looking for uh, birds. Real visual though, you wanna be able to see those fish. Yeah, you definitely wanna be able to see it. Um, you wanna see the fish rolling or free jumping or blowing up on the surface on bait and then kind of move over in that zone. Got him. Right one. That's him. Feels like it. That's him. He doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Doesn't even know he's hooked yet. Here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Give us the show. Give us the show. Coming back. Boiled on the surface like a tarpon. Yeah, it did. There oh, he is, there he nice! Is. Nice fish, bro. Let's get that flat line. Yeah, I'm out of your way. That DOA bait buster, man, you said. Yeah. That was a ticket, yeah, he threw it right in front of him. It's the, the heavy trolling weighted one, one ounce. Right. Got right down to him and started slow cranking it, and bam. Just slow rolling it, pitching it, just like you said, a couple feet in front of him. You know, look for the bubbles after they roll and kind of tell you exactly where they want to be. Golly. Make him jump. <laughs> Come on. Here he is, George. Doesn't get any prettier than that right there. God, look at that right there at the bottom of the lip too. That's kind of odd, huh? Yeah. 
Woo! Good job, brother. Thanks, man. Yeah, what a nice fish. Why don't you fun. get there on that tail? Let's see how big she is. Put All right, that, let's do it. that tail up. I don't wanna really, we don't want to take her out of the water. We just want to. No, yeah. Like you said, we never want to take them out of the water, you know? Yeah. Does a lot more harm than good. Let me get that picture right alongside the boat like this is all you need. Yep. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Yozuri. Fish the best. My personal you know, relationship with tarpon is it's seasonal where I'm at. In the fall, we get a mullet run, and that's really when we like to target the tarpon on the East Coast. You wait these months, these winter months, just for these fish to return, just to have the ability to find them. And just finding them and knowing that they're there, that's just part of it, you know? It, they're difficult to target, they're difficult to catch, and once they're even hooked, they're difficult to land. And that's what makes it so gratifying, is when you do catch one, you know that the preparation and the, the work that you put in to catch it, it's, it makes it all, all so rewarding. Big old white bait on a trocar circle hook. That's it. Got him? Yep. Yeah. Good job, brother. Nice fish. He nice dumped fish. it. Switched it up a little bit, went to some live bait, a lot of white bait in here right now, and that's what they're eating. God, cool fish on that light tackle. Oh my god, they're a blast. Oh boy. <laughs> they get real feisty. That's what you pay for right yeah, there. It. Try to keep them out of the rest. Oh God, how Look sick is that? That thing got high. It's up there. Power pole down, sat right here, man. Just make the perfect presentation of these right. fish. <laughs> Good show. Let's go, baby. Come meet Mr. George. What's nice is, you know, you can come out here and you find these areas and you can scale your tackle back when you find an area like this with some smaller fish. I told you, these Everglades tarpon have a bad attitude. She's flipped. Good little one right yeah. there. That's a fun one. Good size. Here you go. Get out of here. Nice. Let's get another one. Good stuff. When you think of tarpon fishing, you traditionally think of the Florida Keys. You know, crystal clear water, beautiful flats, technical polling skiffs, and these, these fish are, are strung out and you know on a, a beautiful line presenting to a fly fisherman or a, a live bait fisherman. But I tell you, from Jacksonville down to the Florida Keys, all the way up to you know the Gulf Coast into to Destin, even into the Mississippi, is great tarpon fishing as well. Miami is a great place to target tarpon in the wintertime. Obviously, it's got its warm water, but also there's a ton of food coming out of Florida Bay that is just a perfect place for these tarpon to set up. They can sit down here for the winter. They can fatten up on these shrimp. They have these shrimp runs that come out of, out of the cuts down there. They're just incredible. The fishery that takes place some evenings and some nights around these bridges is incredible. A giant metropolis, you wouldn't think of having this number of tarpon, but I tell you, that place can definitely go off. Another place in the wintertime that you can find these fish is down in the Everglades National Park. And these fish will come back into the National Park, back into these creeks and these, you know, these big estuaries and, and set up. So it's another place in the wintertime that you can target these fish. Depending on water conditions and water temperatures, these fish will come in and out. If it's cold, they'll push out into the Gulf to find some warmer water, but on the warm trends, when the water warms up, you know, March, April, May, depending again on water conditions and water temperatures, it signals that, that trigger for these fish to start moving. And they start to make their annual migratory pattern. This happens on both the East Coast and the West Coast of Florida, probably more, you know, known for on the West Coast. But, you know, if you're fishing in a bay boat or a center console, it's a great time to get out on the beach and target these fish that are, that are pushing up the coast. 
For the springtime migration, a great plan is just to set up on the beach. And it's really a matter of finding where these fish are, are coming through, you know, setting up um, on the trolling motor. You don't want to chase these fish. You want to be stationed. You want those fish to come to you. You want to be respectful of other anglers. Kind of, you'll learn to see how far off the beach these fish are actually, you know, swimming through. They'll daisy chain, they'll get in big schools, you'll see them rolling. You want to get out in front of them, whether you're targeting with a fly rod or, you know, artificial or live bait. It's a matter of getting in front of these fish, letting these fish come to you, and getting a bait in front of them. Real Time Florida Sportsman is brought to you by Triton Boats. We take America fishing. And when you're targeting tarpon, it's more of a hunt than it is fishing. I always tell people that it's more hunting than it's fishing. You're going to spend the time looking for these fish. You want to know that they're in an area, whether they're rolling or whether they're busting the surface or where you see bait schools or you're marking them on, on the side vision. You want to have that knowledge that they're there. Once you know they're in a certain area, then you have the confidence to just, just to hammer that area and to get the bite that you're looking for. Basically what we're looking for is bait and uh, the tarpon to show themselves, whether it be jumping, uh, free jumping or rolling. So we're about a mile offshore. Yep, about a mile off. So we're seeing some birds working. We saw a couple of fish blow up. So we're right. gonna kind of work this zone here a little bit, throw in some plugs and uh, hope to get bit. Just found a little ball of fish came up. We're marking them on the rain marine. Big fish, big fish! That is a giant. Absolute giant. Woo! That's a big one! Oh my god! Real, 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 real! Oh! <laughs> I don't know if I even wanted him. Oh. No. No. God. <laughs> that was two casts after I just released one. <laughs> oh boy. That thing was a moose. Woo! When you're targeting these tarpon that are in the 100 pound class, you want to be a responsible angler and make good decisions when it comes to your tackle. You don't want to stress these fish out and be on a fight longer than you need to be. The only thing that's going to do is, you know, damage these fish. So it's a matter of scaling the tackle to the tarpon size. If we're out here chasing 100 pound fish, you know, let's use a seven, seven, six rod, something medium heavy action, you know, maybe 30 to 50 pound braided line, something that I can cast with, but when you're paired up with a 55 or 6,500 size reel, you have the ability to put enough torque on these fish to slow them down and to shorten the battle. There it is. Oh, he's off. Oh, there he is, another one. He's coming at me. He doesn't know he's hooked. Oh, two on one cast. How crazy is that? Let's double up. <laughs> I had one jumped him off. I kept reeling. Another one came up and ate it. Tell me that tarpon fishing down here in the Everglades is not good. You see why people travel all over the world to target these things. You know, such a primitive fish that's been around for millions of years. Great migratory pattern that you can follow them up the coast from Florida, they get up into the Carolinas and to Texas, all into the Caribbean. That's a perfect size right there. Heck yeah. That is the perfect size. Look He's at ready that. to get handled. Look at that. They call him the Silver King for a reason. You got him right in the roof of the mouth. They have such hard mouths. Getting a good hook set on can be a challenge. Giant thread fin. That's all I'm thinking. There he goes. Woo! Good job, brother. Thanks for putting me on him, man. Oh, no worries. Great job. Awesome. That was awesome. Alonzo's the man. He had this fishery dialed in. Uh, to be such a young guy and have just such knowledge of, of where the fish are and how they're behaving and what they're doing is incredible. You know, and, and the only way you get that is time on the water. Nobody can teach you that. It's just a matter of being out there and he's put the time in and he's learned it and uh, he's willing to share that knowledge. Was, is, 
it, that's probably the one of the most special parts about it. Got him? Yep. Nice, big one. Good one. There he is. Nice fish. Nice fish. That time of year, you know, you find the right weather pattern. You get the right weather, you get the right day, and you get the right results. You get the right results. They absolutely crush these DOAs. There he is. Just another Everglades tarpon with a bad attitude. It's blowing bubbles, he's tired. Woo! <laughs> this day is just one of those tarpon days that this is what this is why you do it right here for days like this Woo! there she goes nice <laughs> so cool to see that lure go flying like that though i'll take it that's my kind of release right there real-time florida sportsman is brought to you by pin let the battle begin When I think of Penn, I think of strength and durability, a company that's been in the forefront of fishing for a very long time. Penn is a company that's a leader in innovation for over 85 years, developing fresh and saltwater tackle to withstand the harsh elements. I've been fishing with Penn for over 15 years, and whether I need fresh water, light tackle, inshore saltwater, or heavy offshore tackle, Penn has the equipment that I need. Starting with the latest and greatest from Penn, the new Conflict 2. This reel was specifically designed for inshore light tackle fishing. This is the lightest pen ever made. Pen has used a rigid resin design to lighten the weight on this reel. And paired with Pen's trusted HT100 drag system that's been around for years, this is the perfect choice for inshore light tackle available in 1,000 to 5,000 series sizes. Next from Pen, we have the Slammer 3. Now this is more of a heavy inshore and an offshore fishing reel. This features the IPX6 sealed system. What that means, it's a sealed body and a sealed spool, especially important in those harsh saltwater environments. The Slammer 3 also features CNC gears and Duradrag. This reel alone has 40 pounds of drag, so we're talking about a 6500 Slammer 3 with 40 pounds of drag. I even caught a 125 pound yellowfin tuna on this reel. These reels range in size from a 3500 to a 10,500. What I would use this for is heavy saltwater fishing, tarpon fishing, inshore grouper fishing, and then you could easily take this offshore and target all of your pelagics as well. I could catch dolphin, cobia, and even sailfish with this one reel alone. And then we have Penn's flagship reel, the International. This thing's been around forever and they've done nothing but improve this. The International has aluminum side plate and body, stainless steel gears, dura drag. You know, this thing is built to tackle the biggest fish in the ocean and stand up to the harshest conditions that anybody can throw at it. And the Internationals are made in America. We've thrown bait busters all morning and I, you know what, I knew they'd eat a hard bait and as soon as I chucked that, he was already out there, they just annihilated the thing. It looks like a big mullet. Could not resist it. I actually jumped one off like on the first cast. And then, I mean, look, off in the distance, there's fish jumping. It's the best tarpon fishing I've ever had. Alonzo, man, I'll tell you what, this is your backyard. This is what you do. I tell you, I am envious. Yeah, this is an incredible fishery. It's a, it's a special place for sure. I told you, these Everglades tarpon have a bad attitude. Dude, this is, and this is a good one. And you happen to pick on on a How big, big one. This one is 100? Yeah. Clamor 3, 5,500, 30 pounds spider of wire, 60 pound fluoro. You can make the cast with a braid like this. You can make a long enough cast, but still have the power to stop them. 7.6 rod, battalion, something longer that you can make those casts with. Look at this fish. It can be challenging sometimes with those treble, treble hooks to really get them to stick. You would think with two trebles that they'd stay hooked, but look at that look fish. That is a big fish, dude. Here it comes. <laughs> that crystal minnow right in the side of her mouth there. Barely hooked now. Hold her head, hold her head. There you go. 
God, look at that. Look at this. Look at this fish. <laughs> Woo! Put that Woo. Yozuri right on the side of her face. Oh, yeah. Let's get that thing out. You got your pliers? Here she goes. And the biggest thing that I could suggest is to book somebody like this. If you go to a new area and you need to, to learn a new, a new spot or a fishery, because Everybody does things a little bit different. They may do it one way on the East Coast versus the West Coast, but if you can travel to a new destination to target these tarpon, you know, it'll flatten that learning curve out so much by going with professional captain. And it's all made in America. <laughs> Ready? And he has these tarpon dialed in. Can we get quiet on the set, please? Just finding the fish, but when you have a dog that's bringing you a stick. 